Open AI announces Search GPT, its AI powered search engine that's set to go head to head with Google's traditional search engine. Open AI is launching Search GPT, a new search engine powered by artificial intelligence that provides real time access to internet information. Before we dive in, let me know what you think. Do you believe OpenAI's Search GPT will revolutionize how we search for information online? Drop your thoughts in the comments below. I'd love to hear your opinion before we get started. Don't forget to hit that like button and share this video link in your WhatsApp and Telegram groups. Help keep your friends in the loop about this exciting topic, all right? Thanks. Now let's keep going. Search GPT starts with a large text box that asks the user, what are you looking for? Hold on, we'll take a closer look at that. Instead of just spitting out a simple list of links, Search GPT organizes and makes sense of the information for you. For example, it summarizes findings about music festivals and provides brief descriptions of events with reference links. Let's take a look at OpenAI's website. I'll refresh the page. Check this out. There's a Google style search bar that looks a bit like Google, but also resembles ChatGPT. And what's interesting here, like other tools I've shown before, such as Perplexed AI, is that when you do a Google search, it presents you with multiple links, and then you have to go through page after page to find the answer, all while dealing with that nuisance of ads, which really disrupt the user experience. We really appreciate ChatGPT and other AI tools because for now there aren't any ads interfering with the experience. But another interesting thing here is that it directly delivers the answer you're looking for. So ChatGPT and other AI tools, they basically search websites for you, find the answers and serve them up on a silver platter, all organized in a way that makes sense. Search GPT, for instance, can explain when to plant tomatoes and provide details about different varieties of the plant. After the results appear, users can ask follow-up questions or click on the sidebar to open other relevant links. There's also a feature called visual responses, but OpenAI hasn't revealed exactly how it works prior to release. So let's say I ask for something like, a carrot cake recipe with chocolate frosting. It'll search multiple websites and give me the answer with text, images, and video links. From there, I can ask more questions in the same chat window, and based on the context, it'll search the internet again and respond within the same conversation, which is pretty impressive. This new development could pose a significant threat to Google which is integrating AI features into its search engine to prevent users from switching to competing products, as is already happening. We're talking about ChatGPT, Perplexity, Claude, Microsoft Copilot, and many others. OpenAI is also entering into more direct competition with the startup Perplexity, which presents itself as an AI-powered answer engine. Recently, Perplexity faced criticism for an AI summarization feature that publishers claimed was directly plagiarizing their work. There will always be this debate about AI stealing people's work. It's not AI that steals people's work, but rather people who know how to use AI. And AI doesn't steal your work on its own. These are people who invest their time studying, experimenting with, and applying AI to become more productive to complete work faster and with greater depth. So what's my recommendation? Go study, buy courses, get mentoring, you know, all that stuff. OpenAI seems to have noticed the negative reaction and says it's taking a different approach. In a blog post, the company highlighted that Search GPT was developed in collaboration with various news partners including organizations like the owners of the Wall Street Journal, the Associated Press, and Vox Media, the parent company of The Verge. News partners have provided valuable feedback and we continue to seek their input, says OpenAI. Publishers will have a way to manage how they appear in OpenAI's search features, according to the company.
They can opt out of having their content used to train OpenAI's models and still appear in search results. Search GPT was designed to help users connect with publishers by prominently creating and linking searches. According to OpenAI's blog post, the responses have clear attributions and links in rows and labeled so users know where the information is coming from and can quickly engage with even more results in a sidebar with source links. It's impressive. In my opinion, ChatGPT is increasingly becoming more than just a chat tool. You can use it for chat, create images, and soon Sora will be able to create videos. Soon you'll be able to generate voice and interact by voice too, which has already been announced. And now there's the search feature in addition to the GPT store, which is like an Apple store or Google Play store where you can search for plugins and tools to integrate with ChatGPT. And now a search engine making this ecosystem of ChatGPT more and more complete. Launching their search engine as a prototype helps OpenAI in several different ways. First, if search GPT results are completely off, like when Google launched AI overviews and told us to put glue on the list, did you hear about that? It's easier to say, well, it's just a prototype. There's also potential for incorrect attributions or even mass article theft, which perplexity AI has been accused of. In other words, it's an alpha version. Everything's in testing at first until they release a final version. This new product has been talked about for months with the information reporting on its development in February and Bloomberg following up in May. We reported at the same time that OpenAI was trying to recruit Google employees for a search team. Some ex-users also noticed a new website OpenAI was working on that hinted at a change. It was there, already named searchgpt.com, if I'm not mistaken. OpenAI has been bringing ChatGPT more in sync with the real-time web. When GPT 3.5 was released, the AI model was already months out of date. Last September, OpenAI launched a way for ChatGPT to browse the internet called Browse with Bing, but it seems much more basic compared to Search GPT. For instance, as someone with a paid ChatGPT plan, what I always do in my prompts and commands is specify that I want it to search the internet even if it has the information in its database and knows the answer. I always ask it to search the internet to provide me with the most up-to-date response. OpenAI's rapid advancements have attracted millions of users to ChatGPT, but the company's costs are skyrocketing. The information reported this week that OpenAI's AI training and inference costs could reach $7 billion this year, with millions of users on the free version of ChatGPT only adding to the computing expenses. Search GPT will be free during its initial launch, and since the feature appears to be ad-free, it's clear that the company will need to figure out monetization soon. Wow, if there are no ads and they put it on the paid plan, I'll gladly pay for it. Folks, considering everything we've discussed so far about OpenAI's Search GPT launch, I believe we're on the brink of a true revolution in how we search for information online. This new search engine promises not only to organize and present results more efficiently, but also to provide a much richer and more intuitive user experience. The collaboration with major news partners and the ability to customize how publishers appear in search results are key features that could put Search GPT a step ahead of its competitors. I'm curious to hear what you think about this innovation. Do you believe Search GPT has the potential to dethrone Google? Leave your thoughts in the comments below. I'm really eager to hear your opinions. If you found this news interesting, don't forget to like, share, and subscribe.